everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, as Ajay mentioned, I grew up a stone's throw from here. I grew up in Markham, Ontario, and, and spent or misspent my youth in the Greater Toronto Hockey League. That was most of my upbringing. And that's actually what brought me south of the border, and I'm now in Silicon Valley. But, you know, this day is really special in, in some ways because it's this beautiful full circle moment. I spend pretty much 100% of my time focusing on how Green intelligence is going to transform the world and hopefully transform the world for good. And because of the decades of research here, a lot of the pioneering of this technology has been done in Canada, I get to bring a lot of my work home, which is just fantastic. And so we've been lucky enough to invest in two excellent machine intelligence companies based out of Toronto, and we can't wait to invest in more and, and help those companies out. And so, you know, I just wanted to quickly go over two things. And, and, you know, one of them is I just want to share why this technology inspires me so much. And the second one is, as Ajay mentioned, I want to give you a very practical framework for how to think about this day. Um, so, you know, we, we've talked a lot about methodologies and developing those, but what happens when you really start hitting practical applications? And so to the inspiration point, um, you know, I'm a venture capitalist. I think my days probably look a lot like a lot of yours. I'll often take 10 to 15 meetings a day with people from various walks of life. I love to do research. I love to get up to speed in a bunch of different areas. I need to help my companies recruit. And so I try to pack a lot in. And I found a couple of years ago I was just I was super overwhelmed. I was just trying to do too much. And I noticed over time that it just got a lot easier. And it didn't get easier because, you know, it isn't in large part, it was because of machine intelligence tools that I was using just to basically give myself secret superpowers. And, you know, they helped me with everything from research to scheduling meetings to recruiting both for ourselves and for our companies. And I got to this point where I'm like, gosh, like if you strip me of all these tools, like I couldn't survive in my job. So I was like, wait, wait a minute, you know, if I can't, as an individual knowledge worker, if I can't survive in my job without these tools anymore because they, they supercharge me so much, what's happening to the rest of enterprise and industry? It must be fundamentally transformed by this as well. And so I did what I do, which is, you know, I kind of go into a hole, just take a look at anything and everything that's happening in market today. And so what I'm going to show you right here is but a visual overload. We'll make it all make sense. How many of you guys have seen this chart before? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> you got a head start. So this is anything and everything that's happening in machine intelligence today. So these aren't promises for the future. This is how we're practically applying this technology right now. And, you know, one thing that's immediately clear is, you know, it's a very nascent industry, but it's transforming or at least beginning to transform all walks of life here. So what I'm going to really quickly do is I just I want to walk you through just these individual areas and, and just give you a heads up on what you should keep an eye out for as we hear from everybody for the rest of the day. And so this is the second time I've done this chart. Um, the first time, we didn't have that top row. So these are just emerging technologies. And so in the top left corner, you can see we have what we call agents. And so you can call them agents or bots. Essentially what they are, who's seen the movie Her? OK, good. You've got a primer on this. Um, they're these conversational agents that can help you with a bunch of tasks. And so they're not at the point where you're going to fall in love with them yet. But you know, our team alone uses it for things like we have bots that proactively go out and do research for us. We use, it for, we use it for recruiting. We use it for scheduling. And so I've just put an example up here, which is you know, there, there's this bot from a company called x.ai. And it performs a very simple task. It looks at your calendar, uh, and it has a language generation function. And once it knows that, if you just drop it into an email, it can actually schedule that meeting for you and, and do it as if it were a human. And so one of the interesting things here is you know, I, I don't think this is necessarily well suited for, for example, replacing an executive assistant. But for all of those people at your organization that are still spending time scheduling their own meetings, this can do actually a pretty good job. And so you can free up time to do more value-added things. So on the right side of this, you know, we had these semi-autonomous agents on the left side. On the right side, we have the autonomous agents that are touching the physical world. So this is where, you know, autonomous systems touch hardware. So we've all heard about self-driving cars and the promise of them. We've heard about autopilot for drones. And, you know, quite honestly, this is a very nascent area. The, the degree to which autonomous systems can really transform things is low, but I'm going to share a slightly embarrassing personal story, and that's autonomous robots have surpassed me in the area of expertise that's nearest and dearest to my heart. And so up on the top left is probably my most proud hockey moment. Um, I'm so happy that a photographer managed, managed to capture it. So that's my best attempt at a save after, you know, 10,000 hours of hard work, really trying to be a good goalie. And on the right, you've got this autonomous goalie robot who's, you know, probably two months old at this time. So you think, like, he's doing a better job than the highlight reel than I am. 
Uh, so that was a little bit of an embarrassing moment, but I heard, I heard the guy on the right just got drafted by the Leafs, so. Rebuilding year, too soon, too soon. Um, <laughs> couldn't help myself, I believe Lou. Um, and so getting on to the next row, so the, this is the area of the chart that if you're at a large enterprise right now, you should be focusing on. So if you take a look at the enterprise layer right there, I kind of call this the superpowers layer. Um, these tools are not really replacing anyone at any of these enterprise functions, but what they are doing is they're augmenting their intelligence. The whole purpose of these tools is to gather this vast array of data and actually present what a person needs to see in a given moment to them at that moment and to make sure, you know, they're really focusing on the thing they need to focus on now and not be overwhelmed. So, you know, for example, in the case of security, which is to the far left, you know, there are millions of data points. There could be a hundred, hundreds of signals about bad actors. Like, we don't have the ability to weed through that data by ourselves. And so we can actually rely on these algorithms to really do that grunt work for us and show us what we should be paying attention to. On the platform layer, this is one of the really exciting things, especially for the large enterprises that have data assets that they can leverage. Uh, what these platform companies are doing is they're not only coming in and helping with sort of the hardware and algorithmic pieces of machine intelligence, but they're helping you speak a new language. You know, a lot of us don't necessarily know what this technology can do yet. Like, what can I do with my data sets now that this exists? So these guys are going to come in and they're going to help you sort of hold your hand in speaking this new language that's just emerging. And so moving to the industries, this is one of the reasons you know, I, I do what I do, is I, I really think machine intelligence has this incredible capacity for good. And Ajay mentioned a few of these examples. We're seeing it do incredible things in medicine. We're seeing you know, these algorithmic techniques allow us to disperse loans to people who otherwise couldn't get credit within retail finance. But I'm going to talk just very quickly about a non-obvious industry for machine intelligence, and that's agriculture. Uh, and, you know, there, there are tons and tons of companies transforming agriculture, but I'll just give you a couple examples so you can sort of vividly see exactly what's going on. So if you take a look at that tractor on the top left, this is technology from a company called Blue River. Uh, it might look like a normal tractor, but what it's actually doing is it's got these cameras on the front of the tractor. They're going over these lettuce plants, and it's actually taking a look at individual plants. And it knows when a plant is healthy, it knows when a plant is struggling, and it knows when a plant is not going to make it. And so it can make a decision in real time whether or not it, the plant needs pesticides, so you can now you know, not devote these resources where they're not needed. Um, and you can actually do plant thinning. If the plant's really not going to make it, why are we going to waste all these resources to trying to cultivate it? And so you end up getting the situation where you're able to improve crop yields in an automated and data-driven way. And if you take a look on the right-hand side, you know, we're talking at an individual plant level. Now let's back up to a macro level. This is an aerial shot of a farm, and using computer vision algorithms, we can identify anomalies that exist in these fields. And so I'm sure you've all walked farms at, at some point before. That's a lot of land, and you sometimes can't see these anomalies. It can, uh, it can yield devastate, devastating crop loss if you kind of don't pick up on these things very early. And so now, just by virtue of algorithms and imaging, you can identify all of these areas of risk. And so, you know, this is the, my, my secret hope and goal for this conference as well is that, I, you know, I'm just so proud that this country has done so much work in pioneering uh, machine learning research over the last 20 years. Um, you know, obviously it's become the super hot field in the last five and the rest of the world is, is really investing hard in catching up. And so I really hope Canada can sort of double down and make sure it really fully benefits from all of this hard work that's gone into machine intelligence. And to that end, I hope this conference is the beginning of that conversation. And so you can see up here, I've just highlighted a few of the people that are in the room today. We've got about 50% of these categories covered. If you include the investors that are speaking later today and the companies they've invested in, we've got about 95% of this landscape covered. So, you know, hopefully we can bring together different minds from different places and all benefit from machine intelligence. So thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you.